Hello. 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 Hi. Hi there, and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. What is going on, peeps? Uh, I need to resize this thing. Oh no. Oh no, mistakes have been made. Maybe if I do it like this. Yeah, let's do it like that. We'll put that underneath the overlay. Cool. Works. It's a thing I'm trying. So, what's been going on? What's been going on? What is new? Position my mic better here. Alright. I don't know what that last song was. It was pretty weird. My beard could use some trimming. <laughs> so, um, today, for those who don't know, um, I've been trying to complete my portfolio by the end of May. So today, we are going to be working on Fear the Siren issue number four. It's the last issue of the mini series. Um, it's the one I have the least ideas for. Uh, but I was thinking about it this morning, and I think I have a better handle on where I want to go with it. Um, so that's certainly a good thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely what I want to work on because I want to finish it, and I have... Um, Three more streaming days. Four more streaming days this month. So, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I guess we're just going to jump right into that. Um, boom. And I'm going to move this as well. A better place for this I'm trying to figure this out it's trying something new you know like that is that gonna be too distracting and hide too much of the screen uh, maybe Maybe like that. Whatever. I'm gonna put it there and if it's a problem we'll we'll look at it. Okay. So I've been doing a lot, a lot of comic scripting lately. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I am... Hmm. One second. Wow. 
Why didn't it show Stevie's host? That makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Give me one second here. Oh, I know why, because it's... <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. That makes so much more sense. Okay. Okay. I know why it did that. <laughs> okay, it, it should be working now, I think. Yeah, it should be working now. I don't know why it doesn't show today's host, but it should be working in general. <sighs> let me let me try something real quick. It's working. It's working now. <laughs> well, either way, Stevie, thank you for the host. I will give you a shout out. So anyone who sees the VODs or anything like that will be totally want to go check you out. Stevie is a good friend of mine. She's a creative streamer. She does awesome digital art and also pretends to be a writer sometimes, uh, but we'll never admit to it. Um, but we love her anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened because <laughs> I have to. I have to do it like that because if I don't, I spell it wrong every time. every time so yeah I don't know why your host isn't showing up but every other host is showing up for some reason I realized why it was wrong before and why the list is different because I was accidentally uh, using my cosmic sword account <laughs> event box thing which makes no sense so we should not do that <laughs> And uh, that reminds me, I should go fix the other one real quick because this is going to be wrong all over the place. Oh, no, it automatically updates the element. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, you know. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Uh, so... The whole reason I even got into this hosting thing was because uh, I've been doing a lot of comic scripting lately. Uh, and for those who don't know, I'm working on a comic project with the amazing Andrew Thompson, a.k.a. Shmandrew Art. Boom. Whose Twitch link is right there. And you should definitely go follow if you aren't already. He is an awesome artist. Uh... 
just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I'm very excited to be working with him. Uh, we're going to be working on this bad boy right here, Strangers Beyond the Door. This notebook is very, very full of notes. Here, let's see if I can get this to do a, a real cool flip here. Uh, uh, this is hard to do from this side. <laughs> So we will be working on this comic project. I will be guesting on his stream Tuesday and Wednesday night. Um, I think we're doing both days. I will confirm with him. Uh, possibly doing a dual stream where I'll be working on the first draft, or sorry, revising the first draft of issue number one. Um, so yeah, come hang out with us around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or Eastern Daylight Time, I guess. Uh, we'll be working on this bad boy. Uh, and I just want to mention that tomorrow is Book Club Day, so Read Write Book Club will be continuing tomorrow. We'll be reading uh, Glenn Cook's The Black Company, uh, the first part of it. Uh, I am not very far <laughs> in this, as is usual for me. Uh, I am going to read it today, though. Um, so back to the comic scripting. So because I've been doing so much scripting lately, especially for the project streams beyond the door and all that stuff, I have been really working on my process as a comic book writer. Uh, and the one thing I found that's really helped me and something I've been doing a lot with this guy is, uh, issue breakdowns. Um, so this is like the breakdown for issue number three, like the entire plot right there. So that's something I've been doing a lot of lately. And it's nice when I go and read articles from like people I really respect, like Jim Zub and uh, Anthony Johnson and people like that. Uh, for those who don't know, Jim Zub is a writer based out of Toronto who writes things like Skull Kickers, Wayward. He does a ton of work for Udon Comics, uh, who do all the like Capcom uh, licensed stuff, um, things like that. Uh, so I really, really, really like him and uh, support my Cana fellow Canadian uh, comic writers. He's got an awesome website um, at, uh, I believe it's jimzub.com. I will post that. It's got a lot of awesome tutorials. Yeah, this is the right one. A lot of awesome tutorials about the comics industry um, and what it means being an independent creator in the comics industry. Uh, so definitely go check him out. Uh, the other guy, Anthony Johnson, uh, who I know for writing Wasteland, because um, that's what I know him from. That's how I first discovered him. Uh, here we go. Got his website here. Um, and I can actually pull this open. So I know him from writing Wasteland, this guy here, but what more people will probably know him from at least more recently is this. He is the writer of the graphic novel Atomic Blonde, which the movie starring Charlie Theron is based on. Um, so definitely go check him out. Um, yeah. He's got also a bunch of really good articles on writing, including this one here on process, which I think is one of the best things ever. Um, <laughs> this part right here. So how to, how to write correctly, how to do it the right way. What's the best way to turn my idea into a story? The answer is whatever works for you. <laughs> anyway, you guys should all check out this article. It's very good. I liked it a lot. Um, but in reading these people that I really respect, I found that my process is very similar to theirs. They do a lot of the same things I do. Um, so for example, if I open up Jim Zub's website here, um, and go into this part here about um, 
pacing and page planning. Uh, not this one, page planning. Where, you know, I do this kind of thing. I break my all my stuff down into pages. I try and figure out what uh, sort of segments I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, the answer is shrug. Exactly, Stevie. It's It's whatever works best for you. And the only way to figure that out is by trying a bunch of different things, um, which is why I'm always constantly trying to evolve my process. I spend a little bit of time each week kind of looking at ways to make myself better at what I do. And the easiest way to do that is to read books, read books, read scripts, read things and see how other people are doing them and see if maybe that works better for your process. Um, but I really like it when I'm reading one of these articles about that kind of thing and, and, these people are doing the same thing I am, that I've discovered a way that is similar to what other people are doing, um, that I know I'm not being just completely out there crazy with what I'm doing. And you know what? If it works, then who cares? But still. Um, so yeah, what we're gonna start off with this issue because I don't have an actual like very concrete form for how this issue is going to go. I'm actually going to start out with um, an issue breakdown. I'm going to write up a 500 word sort of summary of what the issue is, go what's going to happen in the issue. And uh, we're kind of going to go from there. I do have a partially written thing that I should open here, uh, which will be in here, I believe. Huh. Why does this seem wrong? This seems wrong. Why am I missing stuff? Ah, here we go. This is what I was looking for. I need this. And I need to make this not tiny so you guys can see it. And so I can see it. Huzzah! What? <laughs> what? What about Conan? What? <laughs> I mean, I I kind of feel like you just say Conan randomly, but sure. What's up, uh, Xenon? How's it going, man? <laughs> so the Conan soundtrack uh, started playing and you just you're like oh man it's Conan and it's like oh wait that's my music um that is a very good question uh, Xenon I I struggle with that a lot because I have a lot of projects uh, on the go or that I've started in the past and uh, it's one of those weird things that uh, <laughs> uh, nice one Stevie um, I kind of feel like okay and this answer isn't going to be particularly helpful but I think it's the correct it's the correct answer in my opinion I think you should do the project that you can only do right now. And what I mean by that is the project that you as a writer could only accomplish in this moment. Um, so 
that's a very very weird philosophical answer but the idea is is that you shouldn't just continue old projects to continue old projects um i get lost in that a lot where it's like oh i have uh six graphic novels and four novels and a bunch of screenplays yeah it does it does <laughs> uh four screenplays like I don't have to continue those unless continuing those is beneficial to me right at this moment um, you know what I mean and I think Stevie could probably expand a little bit on on this kind of idea as well when it comes to illustrations but strangers beyond the door this project I'm working on right now is one of six ideas I proposed to Andrew uh, when we were when we decided we were going to work on a comic project it is something that I had written a one page outline for uh, in 2012 2012 um, that I have not touched since now for me that's kind of like taking back an old project and making it new again but in the same sense, it's something that I never really worked on. Like I didn't really work on it at all beyond that one page outline. So this was very much a new project for me that I really expanded. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if that helps. I mean, if you want, uh, you could expand a little bit on the three ideas or uh, give us basically a breakdown of what kind of they are. I think you write novels, right? Um, I think so. I could be wrong. I might be remembering incorrectly. And um, please feel free to, to. Oh yeah, and like I definitely work on multiple projects at the same time. Currently, right now, I'm working on my on-stream project. So this guy, uh, and I have a couple other on-screen projects that I haven't. I'm kind of put on the side for now. Uh, I'm working on my big project. And I'm uh, my, I'm working on Strangers Beyond the Door, and I'm working on a game programming project uh, that's sort of on the wayside right now because I've been making uh, tons and tons of, of work, uh, like t time and work into this guy, and it's coming along very well. I'm very productive at it. Uh, and I think that's just because I know where I'm going and what I'm doing, and that feeling is nice. Um, yeah, and I agree. Like um, I've talked to a lot of professional writers over the years, um, well, especially when I was in school and stuff. And a lot of them said, you know, I have one project that I'm drafting and one project in the concept stage. And sometimes more than that, but like sort of that idea of you should have multiple projects and they should be in different stages so that you are not thinking about them in the same, you're not thinking about the same things all the time. So, you know, you're not doing two different drafts and focusing on that. You're working on a draft and you're working on an idea. You're working on, uh, an edit and you're working on a draft like there there's different ways to think about it um and now that you mention it xenon i was i was like when i said novels i was like oh but i think he writes short stories and i can't remember if he does both so i'm just going to continue with it but yeah that's fair um so there uh so i guess the question is is how long have you been developing these ideas which idea is the most complete and which idea do you have the most inspiration from? Those would be the three questions I ask for this. So yeah, uh, Stevie, this, this shirt does say Miami. It is actually a Miami Marlin shirt uh, because this is going to be a little weird, but whatever. It says Ichiro on the back. Punch my screen. For those who don't know, I'm a big Ichiro fan. Uh, slash baseball fan, if you couldn't tell by my Jays hat and Miami Merlin shirt. <laughs> uh, so the second question was, which one is the most complete? And the third question was, which one inspires you the most? Ichiro Suzuki. <laughs> All 
All right. So that's question two. Now where's question three? Yeah, um, I don't know why they do that. I just, like, that's how it's been spelt since he became a professional baseball player in North America. Um, don't know. I think they kind of choose is the thing. Like, the baseball player gets to choose how to, how to uh, uh, romanize it. All right. So, Zenon, what that says to me is that you probably shouldn't work on number three. <laughs> Uh, you should probably work on one or two. Um, because you're going to do better with an idea that inspires you and motivates you. And if it's more complete, then you won't have to do as much prep work to get it to a place where you can write it. Um, at least that's the way I work on it. the way I look at it because um, that's kind of the thing is when I when I started to work and I'm gonna probably be talking about this a lot because a I'm really excited and B it's actually like going really really well and it's probably complete and I'm also not afraid to talk about it because it's a comic book script and uh, that has nothing to do with its publishability and all that stuff um, as, as a project so it's not a, not a big deal to discuss it in more greater detail. But uh, like I said, I started this as a one pager. Like I have a single page document um, about the concept. And from that document, I had the entire first issue planned. And then I knew that there were certain other things I wanted to happen. So I had the first issue planned uh, which is basically, um, you have an engineer who's starting his first day at this dam and lightning hits the dam and breaks the dam and destroys a turbine. And inside that turbine, a lightning elemental escapes and changes this engineer so that he now sees through the veil. He now starts seeing the world beyond, uh, sort of thing. You know, it's that through the veil fiction. So very much um, Hellboy and uh, the Boy and the Beast is a great example that um, Japanese animated film that's on Netflix, uh, which I highly, highly recommend. I love their style and their storytelling. It's very, very good. Um, other things that I wrote down as inspiration. I have an entire page of inspiration here, by the way. Um, Kill six, uh, six million demons which is this awesome awesome web comic uh that my friend recommended to me things like narnia things like stranger things though stranger things was not as much of an influence uh, at the time as it is now um because it hadn't come out yet <laughs> and people will, will see that damn stuff and be like oh it's kind of like stranger things right with the power company and the monster and all that stuff and the answer is on the surface yes but no because it, it, as soon as that first issue is done, it's not about that anymore. Um, yeah, it's Kill Six Billion Demons, right? I'm assuming you like the comics, DV. Which is why you're, you're exploding about it. Um, but yeah, so I had this one pager, but I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted this story uh, to be. I knew I wanted it to be this kind of weird fiction. And then as soon as I started, kind of sat down on it, I was like, oh, I know what issue two is going to be. I know what issue three is going to be. I know what issue four is going to be. And then I kind of had an idea for five and six. And then I had, an, well, I had an idea for five. And I was like, no, that's really two issues. And then I was like, oh, so then issue seven will be this. And it's like, that'll be my climax. And then I was thinking about it last night and I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm all worried about five and six not being enough space and time to tell the type of story I like. So 
what if I make it three issues? Have the climax be this really cool moment at the that I was going to have at the end of issue six, be that the end of issue seven, and then I can use issue seven, the plot I had for issue seven, to kind of be my resolution. And then I was thinking about it, and the more I thought about it, it was like, oh man, this is exactly what I'm trying to do. Because I couldn't come up with an idea for issue eight to kind of tie the story together. And then I realized when I was talking about this this stuff right now, or like last night, that I already had my resolution. I didn't need another one. I just needed to figure out a better way to get there and how to tie it all together. Um, and you can hear you can hear how my voice changes when I talk about this project, right? Like I get all excited and I'm like I'm all shivery now, and like I can I can feel it. I can feel the story, like in my spine. It's it's. Uh, it's this weird, weird sensation, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, Zena, I, I would love to see them. Um, hey, Sheeps, what's up? Uh, are you cool with sharing them on stream? You want to send them to my Discord? Uh, like, let me know. Um, if you're cool with sharing them, then we can kind of talk about it now. Uh, if not, I can, uh, follow up with you later, uh, for sure. Um, okay, cool. Steve. Yeah, Stevie, so it's really interesting because the more I work on this comic, like, the more things are, like, sliding into place. Like, where I was working on this really cool image for the end of issue number two, and then I was writing it, and I, and I was writing, like, out the issue, and I was like, this, it seems to, my pacing isn't correct to get to this moment. And then I read the next issue, like, I read my synopsis for issue number three, and it's it's actually slightly too short. So I just pulled that last image, which was a direct continuation, by the way. I just pulled that last image over into the next issue, and it was like, oh, this is complete, and now this is complete. Cool. We're good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have a much I have a much better idea for like kind of it's it's all kind of fitting together. I know I know this plot. I know exactly how it's how it's shaping. Um, and it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. This feeling of like, it just, every time I move a little block, it like makes something a little bit bigger and better and more constructed. I feel like I'm building Lego. Um, all right. So here's idea number one. Small, about three and three quarters inch diameter, planet-like object housing a civilization of tiny people on it. Main character finds in the middle of the story when they're exploring the forest. Okay, cool. So kind of like, um, kind of like, uh, Candor or that like little, uh, that little galaxy that's on the cat's necklace in Men in Black 2. I like that. That's cool. All right, I, I'm starting to get a feel. Um,
What is some random insect arachnid? Antheria polymus in this case gets turned into a human using magic powers. Okay. Um interesting. Oh whoop. Hmm. I mean, if you want my opinion, I think idea number one is better. It's more interesting to me. Um, and that's due to two reasons. One, I personally feel like there's a lot... I feel like there's a lot more interesting ground, science fiction-wise, in the first one. But two, also, uh, the reason I pick number one over number two is also because number two seems... Uh, a lot more familiar to me uh, specifically um, and I'm doing this thing that Sam always does to me <laughs> uh, to you and I apologize for that uh, but I think it is worth noting um, that a I mean and this is partially because of number idea one and what I said about it but uh, number two again reminds me of men in black but also reminds me of uh, this really cool uh, Osama Tetsuka book uh, called The Human Book of Insects. Sorry, The Book of Human Insects, which is kind of a uh, an idea of a human being treated like an insect and, the, and this sort of weird uh, insect-like uh, thought process that gets that gets used. Um so that is part of it. The other part of it is is that I worry, or maybe this is just me being weird about it, but I worry that um, it becomes a story about what makes a human a human. And I feel like those kinds of stories are very much dime a dozen. And I know writing is all about the human condition and we should be exploring the human condition. But I just worry that you kind of tread familiar ground. And that's not necessarily a problem. It's just something that I, I think about when it comes to this kind of idea. Um, and if you want me to expand on that, I totally can. Uh, but those are my initial thoughts. Um, I'm reminded, uh, Sam sent me an article uh, yesterday that he was telling me about about how there are these really cool spiders. Oh yeah, I agree entirely, Stevie. Um, and that's why I said, like, it's one of those things that just because it is traded ground is not necessarily a problem. It's just something that you have to be aware of and you have to add something to the conversation. If you have strong characters and a strong plot and know what you're doing, it can be very, very, very uh, resonant. Um, I 100% think that's the case. It's just one of those things that if you're treading old ideas, your execution has to be good. It has to well, probably even better than good. It has to be impeccable. Otherwise it just becomes sort of a wish wash in the, the grander scheme, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. So Sam sent me this article about a spider who basically has a very, very, very tiny, tiny brain that is capable of doing like crazy human level or or mammalian level problem solving and and basically has crazy computer processing in his brain like it's this insane thing I'll link that article cuz it's very interesting But yeah, um,
Oh, I missed the second part of what you're saying there. I think we characters make a story more about humane humanness or abstract ideas. That's interesting. Um, let me grab a book real quick. This book, that's what I was looking for. So this is uh, Orson Scott Card's book on characters and viewpoint. Uh, it's one of those books that uh, I am very conflicted about <laughs> because I don't, I find it very hard to distinguish Orson Scott's Card amazing writing from his personal and political views. Um, and, and that that is a struggle that I don't like, um, which sucks. Uh, the only exception I make is for his books about writing because they are fantastic, and it's it's hard to get away from that for sure. Um, though this was written in the '80s, so it comes across as a little stereotypical at times, uh, but it is a very good book. Um, and he writes in this book about. Uh, ideas or types of stories uh, where are you here come on what kind of story are you telling page 62 there we go that's what I was looking for so he talks uh, about the several different types of story. There's the uh, milieu story, there's the idea story, there's the character story, there's the event story. Like those are the fa four main types he talks about. So a milieu story is, is a story that is designed to show us a place or a time. It's designed to show like present us with a society, present us with a world, expand on that world where the characters take a secondary place to the world that you're building. Um, an idea story is a story that is designed to explore an idea, specifically a question that is posed, almost like giving a hypothesis and, and, and then giving us a fictional account of ways to prove or disprove that hypothesis. Um, a character story is a character is a story based around a character. So you have um, it's driven by that character's motivations. It's it's all that sort of thing. Character driven stories are the most common type of story told nowadays, mostly because that was something that happened in the film industry and is very very much driven by the film industry. And then an event story is uh, a story that's told with like cause and effect. In a lot of ways, uh, a lot of ways, it's sort of a story like what we see. Um, I was trying to think of a good example. It's a lot of ways like myths are told, where it's kind of like things happen. Um, and there are results of those things happening. Uh, they use examples of like Lord of the Rings and and th and uh, the Count of Monte Cristo and stuff like that. And I think that's relevant for sure, uh, but it gets broken up in different ways. Um, but uh, so so the reason I bring all that up is because when you're talking about uh, sort of weak characters make a story more about hum humanness or abstract ideas, you're, you're kind of talking about like an idea story. You're talking about 
uh, sort of a story that's designed to present this idea of humanists or to present an abstract idea or concept. And the characters kind of take a secondary position to that. And I think that's true, but I think you can also make an idea story that has strong characters. Um, it's kind of about finding that balance of what type, what type of story you're trying to tell. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if any of that made sense. That sounded like a really long ramble to me. Um, <laughs> so there's certainly that, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just about 10 to 1, so I'm probably going to take my break a few minutes early today because uh, I just want to run to the bathroom and all that. Uh, but I hope that helps Zenon. Um, if not, uh, feel free to send me a message uh, or feel free to ask more questions right now or send me a message later if you want me to discuss it further or if, if you want to ask some more questions about it. Uh, don't hesitate. I'm, I'm happy to help with that. No problem. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, and uh, just one thing real quick here before I forget. Boom. Follow that lovely lady right there. She is an awesome, awesome artist. Uh I have some of her art, like literally right, right here. Uh, so you should totally do that if you aren't already. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a few minute break. Uh, I should be back around one o'clock at the latest, probably a little bit before that. But uh, yeah, I will see you all in a bit.